Excellencies, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, it is a great honor for me to be part of this joint event by the Commission on Narcotic Drugs and the Commission on the Status of Women to support gender mainstreaming in the implementation of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. The Sustainable Development Goals provide a comprehensive framework upon which we can devise our development policy and practices for the better future. While all SDG goals and targets are intertwined and mutually reinforcing, Goal 5 focuses specifically on achieving gender equality and empowering all women and girls. Gender equality is one of the central pieces of the development puzzle. It cuts across many important issues that we are dealing with today, including how to build an effective policy in responses to the world drugs problems. It is also true that gender discrimination remains a critical problem and is one of the underlying causes of violence against women and girls. In this regard, it is crucial that we acknowledge that women are not homogeneous and are significant differences among women. Any efforts to mainstream gender into development policies and programs might attempt to comprehend the specific needs of particular groups of women as well as the context with their vulnerabilities appear. In the realm of drug policy, we often find that punitive law and policies pose a heavy burden on women, and in return, on children, the elders and disabled for whom women are often the principal caregiver. Far too often, women who are involved with drugs, whether as user, courier, detainee, or convicted offenders, have endured persistent stigma and suffer from discrimination. Their needs have been overlooked and their pathway to drugs involvement are far from being adequately understood. Significant efforts are needed to understand and address risk factor and condition which render women and girls vulnerable to trafficking, to other drugs-related crime, and even to drugs themselves. For the perspective in respect of socio-economic condition and such cultural biases as gender inequality needs to be taken into account when designing any prevention measures. I note with grave concern that more and more women have been imprisoned for drugs-related offenses. In many instances, they are career for their partner. To a large extent, this could be manifestation of gender inequality and a result of women being in a disadvantaged position in society. It is indispensable that efforts made and sustained by member states and relevant stakeholders to put forward gender-responsive drugs policy, which allow women to fully exercise their rights. Drugs policy and programs that are designed using a gender mainstreaming approach and that are implemented with gender-responsive measures have a far better chance to achieve sustainable outcome. In operational terms, we can start by paying attention to the specific needs of women and girls, whether they are in the community or in detention, especially in relation to access to health, care and services, including HIV prevention. We can draw useful guidelines from the international standards and norms, including the United Nations rule for the treatment of women prisoners and then cost the measure for women offenders, also known as the Bangkok rules. We can also seek to subject the existing punitive measures to review with a more thorough understanding of the contextual factor and pathway of women who become involved with drugs and of those who are come into contact with the justice system. We can ensure that women themselves are involved at all stages of drug policy from design and development to implementation as well as assessment. The challenge is how to strike the right balance. On the one hand, we need robust and effective international and national drugs policy, institutions and mechanisms in place in order to allow us to tackle the serious threat of drug problem. And we are all aware that building, mainstreaming and utilizing this institution and mechanism in itself requires enormous resources. On the other hand, we must seek to mainstream human rights, particularly women's rights approaches to this policy, right-based approaches help free and empower people, thus liberating the economic potential of any society, which in turn 
can contribute to mobilizing the resources that are necessary to maintain our public institutions. While each country will have to make difficult choices and deal with costs and trade-off on their own in trying to achieve the right balance, there is also room for cooperation at the international and regional level in addressing this important challenge. It is therefore very timely that this joint event by Commission on Architect Drugs and Commission on Status of Women provide us with an opportunity to discuss concrete means to promote such cooperation. There are still many women out there who are struggling to find their way out of drug dependency and drug-related crime. I hope that the step we take today will lead to an improvement in our drug policy which contributes to a more sustainable development trajectory that benefits women worldwide. Thank you and I wish you every success in your deliberation.